Welcome to Bit by Bit, a series where we highlight one thing you can do to optimize and run a bit better in Google Cloud. Today's topic, stabilizing your workloads by tuning requests in Kubernetes. Optimization isn't only centered around cost, but on the ability for your workloads to operate with reliable performance. Kubernetes has a built-in quality of service model that is inferred from how you set workload requests and limits. And based on our research, it is most critical to understand the reliability implications of your requests, especially when they are not set at all. So let's walk through them. We recently published the State of Kubernetes Cost Optimization Report, uh, which you can find linked in the description below. And this was focused on identifying patterns from clusters that perform well in managing cost without compromising workload reliability. And actually, our biggest finding in that research came from the lens of workload reliability in that we observed far more workloads without any request set than we expected. So let's demo why this could be a threat to workload reliability using this deployment called no request. It, of course, has no request set. It runs a container to produce CPU and memory stress. And so now let's run a kubectl command to filter for pods that are in a bad state. In this case, evicted, out of memory killed, uh, error, or container status unknown. And once we run that, what we'll actually find is that we have a whole bunch of our no request pods that are in trouble. To investigate the cause, uh, let's describe one of the pods with an evicted status. So we'll just grab this last one um, and see what happened. So as we scroll up here, we can see that this pod was evicted due to memory pressure. This means that the node that the pod was running on was actually very scarce on available memory due to other workloads running on that node. Because this pod set no requests, Kubernetes assigned it the lowest quality of service, best effort, which makes it very likely to be one of the first to be evicted to free up memory. When eviction happens because of node pressure, there's no respect for pod disruption budgets or even termination grace period seconds. Now in this case, eviction was actually performed by the kubelet. But in cases where the kubelet can't evict pods fast enough, then the underlying host out of memory killer will actually step in to kill the container process. And this also takes into account the quality of service class uh, in the score that it uses to choose processes to kill. Now all of this spells trouble for end users of workloads uh, that are unintentionally not setting requests. So the first thing we want to do across teams is actually drive awareness uh, as to what these workloads might be. So in GKE, our team has actually built a dashboard for workloads at risk. And this is directly integrated into cloud monitoring. So if we navigate there, we can search for the GKE workloads at risk dashboard. So the first thing that we see in this dashboard is a top level view of all the workloads in our GKE clusters in this project. And so immediately we can see the percentage of workloads that don't have CPU or memory set. We can also see uh, the percentage of workloads that are under provision, right? So this means that they're using a lot more than they actually request in Kubernetes. And for memory especially, we can see that this is also a reliability risk uh, because this puts them at the burstable quality of service class and in times of memory pressure it could also make them um, candidates to uh, be evicted or terminated. And if we jump down to the best effort section, we can see that the queries are actually already uh, pre-populated, so we don't have to do anything. They're available in the dashboard as soon as we open it. And if you look below, you can see that we actually see um, a deployment resource uh, and the sum of usage in memory that it has across all of its pods. Um, and the same goes for uh, CPU, right? We have the queries already pre-built. So we can basically get a deeper understanding of all of our best effort workloads and how much they're really using when requests aren't set. The dashboard also has a burstable workload section where we can see workloads that are running well above the requests. So we can actually see the percentage of usage against uh, the requests that are made from the CPU. Of course, there are times where we may just see a pot of trouble uh, and we just want to understand maybe the start, what's its quality of service. So if we grep and uh, run kubectl to get our out of memory killed pods, we can actually um, you know, run this kubectl get pod command um, and look for the status QoS class uh, value. And we'll see that yes, this indeed was a best effort pod. Uh, if you want to do this at scale, we have a very, um, or not at scale, but across your entire cluster. Um, and this doesn't have to be a GKE cluster, but we have a simple CLI called kube request checker where uh, it's a basic script that you could use to list all the containers that you have in your cluster 
but don't have requests set. So you can see here that our stress containers uh, for our no request deployment doesn't have CPU and memory requests, right? And so all of this is really the genesis of uh, beginning to um, find that balance between cost optimization and workload reliability. So if you want to learn more about it, I encourage you to not only check out the dashboard that I showed earlier, but also our report that we published um, in June of 2023, where we talk a lot about this. To recap, it is critical that you make sure you have requests set for your workload. If you already have them set, but you're setting them too low, specifically on memory, it's also critical to set memory requests equal to limits to ensure your workload does not get disrupted. And as always, you can learn more at the links in the description below, and we'll see you in a bit.